Hey there everyone, what's up? I am here today showing you a whole lot of stuff that I picked up. Um, there is a lot of stuff, but again, I haven't really done a like a pickups type of video for a while. So this is, I don't even know how long of stuff this is, two months, maybe more. And there's a bunch of it. Uh, I did, there was like a huge PSP sale that I took part in. Uh, you'll see when I start showing PSP stuff. But um, beyond that, there's some other stuff that I talked about. I, I have a feeling that I talked about. I actually shot a pickups video and I never uploaded it. So um, I'm not sure. Some of the stuff I might have shown and some stuff I might have shown in that video and just don't remember. And I'm not going to go back and look. So <laughs> if you've seen this stuff before, sorry. Some people might have seen it on my Facebook if you're my Facebook friend, I guess. Um but other than that, there is a bunch of stuff, so we're going to get into it before this video is like 12 hours, which is possible. But we'll start in, I don't know, I got a bunch of stuff here, but we'll just start with what I have in front of me, because that's the easiest. Um, first, we got something for the PS Vita. We've got Extetra. Extetra? <laughs> the, I don't think this game was actually uh, received very well, but... From what I gather, it's somewhat like a Tales of game. It looks like a Tales of game, and it's supposed to play like a turn-based Tales of game, but there's some kind of, I don't know, kissing mechanic that's part of the game. Um, part of the battle sy system involves kissing. I don't know. It's the kissing RPG. Just really think of it that way. I don't really know what it is yet. I haven't... It was really cheap, so I thought, like, um, the price went way down, and I thought, like, well... It's kind of a weird RPG concept. I guess I could pick it up. This is also on the 3DS, too, if you have an import 3DS you want to use. But um, I got the Vita version because I prefer the Vita screen. But, yeah, I'll get around to this eventually. It's not, like, high on my priority list right now. Playing something else on the Vita. This, actually, Batman. But um, I did talk about this. This is from Crack Lotus, so check out his channel if you haven't from that other video. But, yeah. So, that beyond that, that's all I got for the Vita. But I did get some DS and 3DS games. Some of them you guys will already know. But, start with the DS. I got Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider Gumbaride. And this is a Kamen Rider card battle game. Um, I played a little bit of it. Not a ton yet. It's... I have that, that kind of three-cart 3DS thing going on, where like you can insert three carts into the 3DS, and this is one of them. So I played it a little bit, but I haven't played a ton of it because you know, I was playing Persona Q. But um, I don't know, I haven't actually done any card battling yet, so I, I played it for like a half hour or so, and I didn't actually start any card battles or get any cards. So <laughs> I don't know how it works yet, but... Um, Eventually, I'll get into it more. I, I like um, card battle card battle kind of RPGs like this, if, in theory. Um, they're not always good. Sometimes they're not good at all. But, uh, for example, if you've ever played the uh, SNK versus Capcom one on the Neo Geo Pocket, that game is spectacular. And there are, like, t two of them. So, on the... Neo Geo Pocket. There's a third one on the uh, on the DS, which I also have, and I really like those games. So I've been trying to find more card battle RPGs that are similar to that because I kind of get hooked on them really easily. So the Common Rider one was one I picked up to uh, kind of scratch that itch, but I still haven't really got around to it. And also for the DS, I got Final Fat Fantasy Tactics Advance Two or A Two, I guess. Um, but I don't know why I've never played this. Uh, I got, I you know, I really liked Final Fantasy Tactics Advance on the Game Boy Advance, and and then when this came out, I just never got it. I don't really know why, but <laughs> you know, I always I always like the kind of Final Fantasy Advance. It's, it's like the story is like a total kind of uh, never-ending story ripoff. It's like bullied kid in the with the library book gets sucked into the book world like. That's pretty much the entire plot of uh, 
never ending story. But whatever. It's it's still a fun game, so glad to have that. Uh, we'll move on to the 3DS. I got three 3DS games here. Um, and, well, I'll start with the obvious one because you guys know I've already played it. But uh, that's Persona Q. Uh, Persona Q, I have an impressions video up if you want to see it. It's long. But overall, it's like Entry and Odyssey with a Persona skin. And it's fun. Uh, this is Persona Q, uh, Sound of the Labyrinth. This was like a bon pre-order bonus. It's like a... I think there's four tracks on this CD. It's a it's a four track CD. Um, yeah, that's what it is. But Persona Q, long long impressions video up if you want to watch it. So I'm not gonna dwell on that because I got a lot of stuff to go through. And next we've got some other weird stuff that uh, <laughs> I when like when I bought actually when I bought Extetra I bought these two games also with it. And because they were really cheap, and I thought, like, they're kind of outside of my comfort zone in terms of gaming. Like, they're not things that I would normally play, but they were kind of things that I thought, like, well, that's kind of weird. And it's so cheap that even if it's bad, it's not, like, a huge amount of money I spent on it. So, like, paying a couple bucks to try it is not, like, a, something I'm totally against. So I got these, uh, these two 3DS games in this one, this first one, because I thought it's insane looking. Um, that's this one. Um, oh, I for, this is Kobito Zukan is the series, but uh, I forgot the name of this one. It's Kobito no Fushigi Jiken Setto. This is, <laughs> and like, I want to put this up close if you can see these whacked out characters. But these characters, I don't know what they are, but they're like, um, these ugly little things that are like trolls or something like troll dolls or something that's what you I would like equate them to because they started out as these little figures that are like ugly and people they became popular in Japan obviously and um, then there's games made and there's like a this is actually this sequel there is a first one but this, this the sequel here was much cheaper so I figured well sequel has more stuff and it's cheaper and I don't really know what it is actually it's it seems like a simulation game where you're kind of hunting around the yard for these weird little creatures and then you have games mini games maybe with them I don't really know um, this is another one that it would be in my three three slots on my 3ds but uh, the Persona Q took its spot so I took it out so I haven't played it yet but it looked bizarre enough to, to be like, even if it's just a novelty, like all the reviews were um, kind of in the range of, uh, this is, it's really weird and it doesn't have much replay value. And I thought, well, I'm not planning to play it over and over. I, if it's really weird, that might be fun. So <laughs> I picked it up. It's, it looks really weird. And next, we've got another one that you would definitely not expect me to be getting. Uh, this is AKB48 plus me. And this is an AKB48 kind of music rhythm game. And um, it's not exactly a music rhythm game, though. It's, it's kind of an idle simulation plus music rhythm game. And the kind of idle simulation part of it is uh really interesting to me i'm sorry like i just shook the camera there <laughs> but um this this game i thought like i i saw a review of it somewhere and i thought like well, that actually sounds kind of interesting even though i'm not like i don't like akb48 i'm not a fan i don't collect anything from them i i don't listen to their music but the concept of like the um the simulation parts were kind of interesting to me so i it, and it was like four dollars or something brand new, so I thought like, oh, okay, I'll just I'll just get it and try it. And I have been playing this, and I did put a bit of time into this, a couple hours at least, five or six hours at least into this game. And it's actually like um, strangely fun. Like I don't like the the music in it, and but the simulation part is fun. You have to like train your girl, her name is me to be a uh, 
you know, an idol. And she, basically you're taking dance lessons and singing lessons and you, like, go on TV and do, like, things with the other members. And then you have, like, every once in a while you'll do performances. So that will be the music rhythm sections where you'll be doing, you know, dance routines and singing along with AKB48. That's essentially what it is. And because it's so cheap, like, at the price I bought it, like, four dollars about about it was about 400 yen and um it, it's it's worth it for that price i would actually recommend it um at that price now i mean if you're gonna have to pay like a full price for it i would i'd be like you could just skip it but if you're like even if you're not an akb48 fan like it's it's a kind of a fun simulation it, it reminds me of those kind of old it's not as in-depth of these kind of games but like games like princess maker um or and Princess Maker is kind of old. That's like like a PC Engine and uh, um, Saturn game. Maybe it was on the PlayStation 2. Whatever, Princess Maker. Um, it reminds me a bit of that, except not as obviously not as in depth. It's kind of a it's it's totally a game that's aimed at twelve year old girls, and uh, you know I'm not embarrassed to say that it's kind of fun too. So yeah, that's about it for the other the kind of more recent handheld the PSP I'll save to last because there's just so much of it but I did get some other things I got one PS3 game beyond what I showed in the other video um I got this is um Sakigake Otoko Juku and this is a manga fighting game it's made by Namco Bandai or Bandai Namco and they it's, you know, it's kind of right on the trails of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It's, like, got a similar kind of, I think, play style. It's not as, you know, it's not as stylish, but it's because it's not based on JoJo. But it is based on a different manga that's bizarre. And I've never read it. I don't know anything about it. But all the characters are, like, these crazed muscle men in this, like, um, weird f fighting school for delinquents or whatever i don't really know but it's the most bizarre it has the most bizarre start for a game i've ever fought there's just like man ass paddling in the it's the first thing you do in the game is like smack their asses with a huge paddle it's uh, i i don't know I, I honestly don't know the fighting is all right though it's not like super um deep or anything but you know, there's lots of goofy stuff going on, and everybody has these, like, kind of over-the-top fighting kind of styles and fighting moves. So, you know, it's it's kind of... It's probably more fun if you know what the... If you know anything about the um, comic, which I don't. But playing through it, it's still kind of... It's wacky and goofy, and the characters are kind of interesting. But I don't know... It's it's probably all right if you like this kind of thing, but the, the sub there's a subtitle in here. It's like Nihon Yo Kore ga Otoko de Yaru, and that's like Japan. This is what it means to be a man or something. And if you can guess like from the from the titles, like it, that's the kind of tone of the game. It's really over the top manly goofiness. So yeah. And next we got a Wii U game here. We got uh, Batman Arkham City. This is the Armored Edition. Um, the Armored Edition, this is weird because, like, the Japanese one came with two cases. It came with this steelbook and a regular case, which is, like, the regular case is the, the normal Japanese case. And then the steelbook that it came with is a European steelbook. It, it like, came with a note um, <laughs> um, in the in the box. Like, it was they were shrink-wrapped together in the set as new and like in there was a note from um the developer saying like oh this is or well, the publisher i should say like the case is a european case and the normal case is a japanese case so use them as you will uh that <laughs> i thought that was kind of weird like why even i guess like they're mentioning it because you know everything is in english on this case and on the japanese case it's in japanese but yeah, so adding to my tiny, tiny Wii U collection. But yeah, I you like I 
I mentioned this before, but I played Arkham Arkham Asylum, and I really liked that game, and then I never played Arkham City, and I never even, like, thought about buying it. And then, you know, it was this, this version, like, brand new on the Wii U was cheaper than the used version is still on the PS3 or Xbox 360, so Wii U version it is. And eventually I'll get around to this. I know I'm going to like it, too, which is weird, and I'm actually playing that other Batman game right now. Um... I don't know why I haven't played this. Uh, I know I'm going to like it, like I liked Arkham Asylum. I just haven't been in that kind of mood. So yeah, that's about all of my stuff for non-PSP games, but really I bought a ton of PSP stuff. Um, some of it I've talked about already, because I finished. But I, I kept buying PSP stuff because there was a huge sale, and then there was like another thing where you know, people were putting ideas into my head that I had to buy these games. Not really. It was just like, it was like a subliminal message. Like, they'll ask a question about it, and then I'll just be like, damn, I gotta get that game. So I got this stuff. But we'll go through. Uh, this one was the most expensive one, actually, um, that I've already talked about. This is Zetai Zetsume Toshi 3, which is part of the... Um, what the hell are the English names? Raw Danger and disaster report this is the third version third game in that series uh that never came out in english but and it's one of irem's last games fucking irem <laughs> irem is still a company but they only make like uh pachinko's uh and pachi slow stuff now they stopped they closed all their game development studios which is sad because not only does like that mean we're probably not going to ever see any more of this series but also all of their games suddenly skyrocketed in price like seriously if you want to if you want this game it's it's like forty dollars or so which isn't i mean it's not horrible but it's it's like one of the more expensive psp games but if you want r-type tactics 2 r-type tactics 2 is like a 150 dollar psp game it's like easily the most expensive one i can think of and solely because Irem isn't making games anymore. That's it. Uh, let's see. Uh, next we've got Shining Blades and ooh, Shining Arc. And these are the two more Shining games that came out on the PSP. I'm currently playing Sh ooh, Shining, Shining Hearts. <laughs> so Shining Hearts I'm playing right now and I you know, I'm enjoying it enough to uh, say that, like, yeah, I'll probably want to check out Shining Blades and Shining Arc. And, you know, more Shining series games. Shining Resonance is coming soon, also, on the PS3. Sadly, on the PS3. I'm not, I'm not, um, not really. I'm glad it's coming. I just would have preferred it on the Vita. Or at least an option to have it on the Vita, but, you know, what can you do? Um... Shining Arc, Shining Blades. These are apparently more like Valkyria Chronicles battle system with a kind of combo system going on. But I haven't played them yet, obviously. They look a lot different. From looking at the back of the, back of the box, they look a ton really different from Shining Hearts. Which Shining Hearts, when you're playing it, looks almost like a PS1 RPG. Like this, It's like 2D sprites. It's almost like... Um, how NIS does their games, like the Disgaea games. That's how the sprites are in the game. They kind of remind me of that. But uh, looking at Shining Blades and Shining Arc, they're more 3D models than 2D stuff, as far as I can tell, at least. So, yeah, eventually I'll get to these after I... I guess after I finish Shining Hearts. But speaking of more Sega games, I did get Valkyria Chronicles 2 and 3, I, I, I think I might have shown Valkyria Chronicles 2 way back because I played through, recently played through Valkyria Chronicles 1 again and like I bought, I remember buying Valkyria Chronicles 2 and thinking like, well, I don't even remember the story for Valkyria Chronicles 1, so I'm gonna just play that again. So I played Valkyria Chronicles 1 and I got, and I have Valkyria Chronicles 2 and 3 waiting to be played. Um, this, this was another series that like Batman, where I was just like, why didn't I continue playing these games? Um, I love Valkyrie Chronicles. The first one is a really good game, and then, like, 
I just never picked up two or three. So I remedied that and I'll eventually play these two. So yeah, that's pretty much half of my PSP games were Sega games so far. But I think that's the end of the Sega goodness. But we did get some other stuff here. Um, I got Metal Gear Acid, and this is from uh, Mike Aerodynamic was telling me, like in the AGP chat, we're talking. I was there. Metal Gear comes up a lot because there's a bunch of Metal Gear fans in there. But I don't really like Metal Gear. I'm not like a huge fan. Um, I played Metal Gear Solid, and the first Metal Gear on the on the NES was one of the games I owned as a kid. So I, you know, I beat that game a bunch of times, and I had, of course, Metal Gear Solid, which I, on the PS1, which I also beat a bunch of times. But after that, not really played any of the games. And I figured, like, as I mentioned earlier, I like card battle games, and I like the, the idea of, like, strategy RPGs with card battling. So Metal Gear Acid seemed like a good fit for me. So, and it, it's apparently not part of the main story so I, it's not even really necessary for me to understand what's going on which I also enjoyed because you know I don't want to have to play like 15 games or whatever to, <laughs> to figure out what I'm doing in one um, but yeah Metal Gear Acid and it, you know it's possible that I'll actually go back and start like playing the games in order or whatever you know just to uh, refresh my to if I get really into the story or characters for some reason you know, I just, I, I'm not really into Metal Gear. That's it. I mean, maybe I'll, if I enjoy it, I'll be like, yeah, maybe I'll get Portable Ops, and then I'll be like, okay, then I'll get Peace Walker because it's on the PSP, and then I'll probably just be like, oh yeah, I guess I can get two and three on the Vita, and I have four already, but I haven't played it, and you know, but it seems like too convoluted for me, so. I don't know. I know a lot of people love it. It's just... I never really got... I'm not like a huge stealth fan, I guess. That's really what it boils down to. I'm not like a stealth game guy. Um, we got a, some other stuff here. Uh, I got Grow Lancer on the PSP. Grow Lancer is... Um, a game I played on the PS1. And... This is a, essentially the same game, I guess. There's not really many changes... It doesn't look like there are, at least. Um, but it's been a long time since I played Grow Lancer, so yeah, I just it was cheap, and I think Alex Return to Mother Base was mentioning it in the AGP chat, and I was like uh, out looking for stuff for him, and I saw it, and I was like, ah, it's so cheap that I'll just get it, and eventually I'll play this again. This is a game I've already beaten though. Um, so it's not like super high priority. It's just kind of something that I enjoyed and wanted to play again eventually. But yeah, Grow Lancer. And this is, I, I, I want to say, this is pronounced Grow Lancer, not Grow Lancer, like many people like to say. I, I can say that with 100% confidence because the Japanese is uh, clearly Grow Lancer. So if you're calling it Grow Lancer, you're wrong. That's it. Um, there's no arguing that point. Grow Lancer. <laughs> um, let's see. Next we've got Jewel Summoner. This is another Return to Mother Base thing. He was asking about it in the AGP chat, and I never played it, but it's apparently made by the same one of the uh, game designers from uh, the original Shin Megami Tensei, and I thought, well, that sounds interesting enough to me to uh, pick it up and try it. So, I guess it's more, uh, not as, not quite as dark and in-depth as Shin Megami Tensei is, but it was so cheap, like, it, I think it was three dollars or something, and I thought, like, well, you know, even if it's mediocre, three dollars, that's, I have more change in my pocket than that at the moment. So, <laughs> you know, what can you do but buy it, I think, that's the only option. Uh, this is this one is kind of a blind buy. Um, I don't really know. I think this is a visual novel. It's made by Spike, and this <laughs> this is Gachitora. Um, this is Abarenbo Kyoshi in high school. The in high school part is actually in English. If you can see that, so 
I'm not gonna, ah, uh, you can't, whatever. But it, it looks like there are kind of, it's kind of a visual, visual novel with weird um, beat-em-up sections maybe, or mini-games with in in classroom mini games i don't really know it's it just seemed really interesting to me i like these kind of like uh characters and stories where it's like you know these kind of toughs i guess that's the best way to explain them you know like kind of like gang member type people in japan i think it, it's like a kind of i got a soft spot for those that kind of uh story so, I, I I don't have high hopes for this actually. I don't think it's going to be great or anything. I just thought like, well, it came out it came out relatively close to the period when Dangan Rompa came out. So it's made by the same people. Could be good, but it looks more like there's just like fishing mini games and stuff. So it could just be uh, like a waste of time. Also possible. Um. And then we got uh, Jean d'Arc, and I, I've never played this. I, uh, I know people rave about this game, like it's the greatest thing ever. So I figure I should play it. I mean, I like strategy RPGs. There's no reason why I shouldn't play it. Um, I think a lot of the reason is that I'm not like a huge level five fan. I find their stuff to be not enjoyable for me for most of the most of the stuff. So kind of you know i i don't really i don't know i don't really like look into their games all that much but this one is like one that comes up a lot and i i think like it was part of the sale so it was like two dollars or something so i should probably just give it a shot and you know i expect it to be good it's just um you know just haven't played it yet and the final one, again, this is a game I actually played on the Wii, but, uh, you know, can't can't go wrong with the UMD copy. So I got Silent Hill, uh, Silent Hill Shattered Memories, and Shattered Memories actually, I b believe it's supposed to be like a remake of the first game, but I, I really like Shattered Memories in the sense that there's no fighting, and I think that is really realistic for a horror game like I, I think like in my case if i were in silent hill like if some like bizarre creature was coming at me i wouldn't be trying to hit him with a tv or whatever i would be like <laughs> running away that would be what i would be doing and that's what this game is about running away from everything so i i know a lot of people hated that about shattered memories but i think that was a really good thing about Sh shattered memories it was like a uh pretty good uh mechanic where you just had to run but yeah i think that's about it actually this was a long pretty long video so it's about a half hour but yeah i don't think there's anything else there might be but whatever if if there is you'll see it in the next video although probably not the next video is going to be a big um dreamcast extravaganza because, you know, as I mentioned in my uh, uh, Q&A video, I don't have a Dreamcast currently. Like, I had one, but I don't have one now. So I recently there was another big sale, and I it was, like, overlapped with another sale. So, like, there was a sale going on where prices were slashed, and then, like, there was another sale where, going on, on the same at the same place where if you bought, like, some types of retro games in like bulk if you bought a lot of them you would get a bigger discount like the more you bought the bigger the discount so i just went to the max discount and bought a ton of stuff and a, and a uh, dreamcast so i got about a 15 games or so so that will be the next video the dreamcast pickup but for now that's it so long pickups and a lot of stuff mostly psp games so yeah i will see you guys next time